today I have a story called The Piano and the Bear, or The Bear and the Piano by David Litchfield. One day in the forest, a young bear cub found something he'd never seen before. What could this strange thing be, he thought. Shyly, he touched it with his stubby paws. Oh, that strange thing made an awful sound. So the bear left, but the next day he came back, and the day after that too, and for days and weeks and months and years, until eventually the sounds that came from the strange thing were beautiful, and the bear had grown big and strong and grisly. When the bear played, he felt so happy. The sounds took him away from the forest, and he dreamed of strange and wonderful lands. It wasn't long before the other bears in the forest were drawn to the clearing. Every night, a crowd gathered to listen to the magical melodies coming from the bear and the strange thing. Then, one night, a girl and her father came across the clearing. They told the bear the strange thing was a piano, and the sounds it made were music. Come to the city, they said. There's lots of music there. You can play grand pianos in front of hundreds of people and hear sounds so beautiful they will make your fur stand on end. The bear knew that if he left the forest, the other bears would be very sad. But he longed to explore the world beyond the woods, to hear more wonderful music and to play bigger and better than before. And before long, the bear's name was up in big bright lights in the big bright city. He played sold out concerts in giant theaters. Every night he performed with such passion and such grace to wild applause and standing ovations and huge admirations. The bear recorded albums that went platinum he was interviewed for magazines, he won awards, he met new people every day and created headlines everywhere he went. The city was everything he had hoped it would be, but deep down something tugged at the bear's heart. He had fame and awards and all the music in the world, but he missed the forest. He missed his old friends. He missed his home. So the bear decided to go back. He speedily crossed he speedily crossed the river and excitedly pounded into the forest. He couldn't wait to tell his friend about his time in the city. But when the bear reached the familiar clearing, it was empty. No piano, no bears, no anything. The bear started to worry that his friends had forgotten him or that they were angry that he had left them behind. Then a friend stepped out into the clearing. Hello, cried the bear. I'm back. I've missed you so much. Without saying a word, the gray bear ran back into the trees. Wait, called the bear. I'm sorry I left. Please stop. But his friend just kept running. The bear stumbled after him, moving deeper and deeper into the forest until he saw something that made his fur stand on end. For the bear had not been forgotten. His friends were not angry, but proud. The bear realized that no matter where he went or what he did, they would always be there watching from afar. They had even kept the piano safe in the shade, ready for his return. So after the bear had told his friends about his life in the city and the many concerts he had played, he sat down to play once more. This time, for the most important audience of all, the end. And that was The Bear and the Piano by David Litchfield, published by Clarion Books.